What is going on everybody? It's your boy Jay Sama and today we're talking about uh, just a little a tiny bit of culture today. I didn't really like, I wasn't able to do a, an entire episode of Canon Culture today. So that'll probably be tomorrow or maybe the day after. We'll see, depending on if I can get all the clips together. But today we are talking about one thing and one thing only. The fact that Sony decided to opt out of E3 2019. I'm, I'm not gonna lie. I'm a little baffled. I'm a little worried. I'm a little skeptical, okay? I'm sure anybody would be. But listen, your boy has thought about it, okay? I thought long and hard. I was like, there must be a reason why they're skipping this year. And the answer is simple. They don't have anything to show. That's it. There, there, there must not be anything. See, when you exhaust the past two years of games and titles and stuff, that's not coming until 2019, 2020. I mean, what more can you show? That's it. Unless, which this might be a thing. The fact that Sony is deciding to do something a little bit more streamlined, the way like Nintendo does their Nintendo Direct. Um, so, I mean, it makes a little bit more sense to do it that way, where it's a video press conference, everything's con in a controlled environment, everything's just easier to maintain for them, which I understand, that would be great. But, also at the same time, for uh, Sony to admit that they're not going to have a presence at all, just seems a little strange. And now it presents a bigger question, are even are trade shows like this even necessary? Are conventions even necessary anymore when it comes to this stuff? Because we have digital access to uh, E3 at a moment's notice, like the day of, you know, like there's digital tickets, there's, you know, the VR experience and stuff like that. You know, there's so many things that you can experience virtually with E3 because of access through the internet. But I'd, I'd have to say some of this stuff is just not necessary at all. I mean, you know, actually going to E3 is a great experience. I've only been twice myself. Uh, extremely long lines, people don't bathe. It's just, it's just, uh, it's a mess, but it is a fun mess none, nonetheless. Um, so I remember I got to play Halo 2 one year. Uh, Halo 2 and I think it was God of War 1 or 2. It was one of the God of Wars I got, I got a chance to play. Um, and I remember the company I was working for at the time, it was like, it was so cool to be able to go. It was really exciting because I felt like I was a part of the industry. I was like, yo, I feel like I'm here because I'm supposed to be here. You know, like I have some type of, you know, I'm connected to all this shit and not just by a controller either. So, um, and then the second time I went, I was working for this other company that was uh, an arcade and it was, it was okay. I mean, I, I didn't really enjoy it. I brought my buddy Tony. He got to experience it a little bit. We got inside, but then forgot. I forgot my wallet and needed to come back out. And they were like, oh, we've already scanned it. It was like, we had some issues getting in and it just wasn't, we only got like half a bag of stuff and we just couldn't get back in. And I was just like, I don't, I don't understand. Uh, there, there's an issue here, but anyway. That point aside, it was just great. I just had tons of fun. It was awesome, but at the same time, it was kind of one of those things that would have been overwhelming if I hadn't seen so much of it before. Like, obviously, like back in the day, we used to watch E3 on like G4 and, you know, on, on, on the online. Like, there would only be like a single stream of like something going on for a limited amount of time. And obviously, you would see the press conferences, you would see Sony, then you would see Microsoft, then you'd see Ubisoft, you'd see. Uh, Bethesda, EA, uh, and then Nintendo would come on like the third day or something with their Nintendo Direct. Like for the longest time, it just felt like that was necessary. But now, I'd have to say 2018 gaming is just completely different. Like the way 2018 gaming feels, it's like almost no competition, man. It's just like everybody still kind of like, at least the people I affiliate with in my circle a little bit, everybody still seems to think this old mindset of like everybody's in competition it's playstation versus xbox versus nintendo it's not like that anymore unfortunately um and i say unfortunately because i feel like exclusives and really disliking another person's console like at least when you're within the industry not obviously uh when you're a fan because then you just get into like fanboy like man child bullshit like stuff like that i'm not really down with that but what i am down with is the fact that Back in the day, Sony and Microsoft used to compete on everything. They really were just, 
Yo, we have the best exclusives. We have the best experience on our on our games. Listen, we got this. We got that. We got Heavenly Sword. We got God of War. We got this. Boom, boom. Ratchet and Clank, Jack and Daxter, all of these great games. What y'all got, Xbox? And Xbox was like, yo, we got exclusive Mortal Kombat skins. We got Soul Calibur with fucking Yoda in it. We got Halo. We got Gears. We got this, that, the other thing. There was just so many things that everybody brought to the table, right? And then Nintendo, obviously, we have everybody. Like, that was it. And Nintendo, that's all Nintendo had to ever do was like they had money based upon their fanboys and just everything that they stood for. And they were like, they'll buy, sheep will buy anything. That's That was the mentality with, um, with Nintendo. But now it just seems like, uh, okay, every couple of months we'll get We'll get an exclu exclusive or two, you know, just a few. Uh, and uh, then we're gonna get uh, multiplats all over the place. And now it's become a point where everything is multiplat. Like, I remember uh, this past E3 when everything was announced on Xbox and they were like, oh, by the way, all of this is coming to PC. And I'm like, what do I need to buy an Xbox for? So, and I get it. You know, Microsoft wants to own the market. Microsoft really wants to take over and do what they can with everything and not just with Xbox. But, you know, it just it just loses its luster now. I mean, even when it comes to something like like Sony just giving up when it comes to crossplat, which yes, everybody likes crossplat. That's great. And the the stance that that they had taken was a little stupid, yeah, but they could have picked and, cho and chosen like, listen, we're gonna give cross-platform, but only for these specific games, and boom, 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 but then also been able to flip that marketing and say, listen, if you guys get it on PlayStation, we have these exclusive things, and like, work that business deal out. Or, the fact that they just destroyed the Vita. Like, the Vita was one of the, one of the greatest like tools in the PlayStation lineup. There's no reason why they should have killed it themselves by just depleting first party support. I don't, I don't understand that. I just really don't. That's, it's almost like they were in this mentality. I don't know what was going on. Honestly, this is just my guess. It seems like it was this mentality of like, listen, you should be honored to be put on the Vita. You know, our Vita is clearly superior to the Nintendo, whatever the fuck they're working on, right? But then they had almost no games come out, almost no crossplay games available. There were very few games that were crossplay when the system just begged for you to play your game on the console flip it to the Vita and then take it to go. Like, it screamed that, like the Vita was extremely powerful, but now we're in this place where I guess Sony just doesn't want to compete for shit. I guess Sony just doesn't want to win enough because everybody's winning. It is literally the equivalent of giving everyone participation trophies, which by the way, I think is dumb as shit, okay? If you're out here making stupid games, people need to, like, you need to understand, like your game was terrible, don't make any more. Like, I feel like the stakes are not high enough, but at the same time, they really are. Like, games are so expensive to make, yet they're so easily just thrown out there and they're trash. Like, it's just, there's so many games that come out that are just awful, that are just terrible. Like, they're not fixed, they're not optimized, they don't work very well, facial animations are terrible, no budget behind it, it just, voice acting is terrible. I. Where, what is going on? What is going on in the gaming industry? Because it's not like it was in the early 2000s, late 2000s, when gaming was really like, it was a prideful thing. Now it's just like you put a game out and it's like, ah, whatever. I'm sure some of these people expect like higher numbers and stuff, but for Activision, EA, DICE, all of these, Ubisoft, all of these companies to do the things that they do is just so, so just ugh, what i'm i'm just so confused at the gall of the things that they're just like yeah people will pay for this and then we do it anyway as consumers i don't understand like it's just we are rewarding this bad behavior in the gaming industry and it's just really really bad but that's just my point of view let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below i really really i'm 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 sticking to a point of uh, cynicism on this, okay? I'm very cynical about this situation, about just gaming in general, which is why I love gaming on PC. If I don't like something, I'm gonna instantly refund it. They instantly give, my, give me my money back. I can find discount codes. I can find all sorts of stuff. I can pirate games if I really wanted to. I don't encourage that, but I, I can try a game before I buy it, you know? Consoles, it's, it's just a little, 
I mean, you know, you go to GameStop, you open, the, open your game, you know, you get home, you gotta wait for it to install, da 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 da. Then, you know, it turns out you don't like the game. So then you gotta take it back, and the guy at GameStop is just like, hey, listen, I can give you store credit. I can't give you your money back. And then you're just furious because you're like, yo, I worked hard for this money. This is $60 coming out of my personal pocket and I spent it on something I did not enjoy. How disrespectful is that? You mean to tell me that my time, the time of my life energy, my life force, my entire being, I offered enough time to accumulate this amount of currency in order to purchase this product that somebody else slaved away on and it's a piece of shit. That doesn't sound fair to me. But like I said, let me know down in the comment section below what do you guys think. Make sure to give today's video a like if you enjoyed it. Oh my god, I am so tired. <laughs> also, make sure to subscribe to the channel if you are new. And also, sponsorships and memberships are now available. You guys can scroll down in the description section. You'll see a section that says become a member. Okay, make sure to go ahead and click that link. Sign up today. You know, it greatly... Uh, I really, really appreciate whoever uh, decides to do that. Thank you so much. It really means a lot to me, and it greatly, greatly supports my channel. So, you know, with that being said, this has been your boy Jay Sama. Make sure to ca I'll catch you guys next time. Holy crap, I am tired. I'm ready to go. Make sure to keep it canon. <laughs>